So today we'll be going over frames and machines and we'll be going over some examples on how to solve some, some problems with them. Now fr frames and machines are basically two types of structures and they basically frames um, are used to support loads whereas machines contain moving parts and are designed to transmit and alter the effects of the forces. So when it comes to frames um, generally speaking, um, they are composed of multi-force members, not necessarily. They're very similar to trusses from that aspect, and they can oftentimes be confused with them. When I essentially was learning this concept, I kind of confused frames with trusses just because they had similar structures. But let's go ahead and look at this example, for instance. So for this example, initially, I would confuse this with a truss. But keep in mind, trusses are composed of two force members. And what that means is that every member within that truss is only being applied. Um, there's only two forces being applied uh, at each of its members. And they're usually at the pin connections. Now for this particular example, we have a pin here. So there's one force. And for this member, BC, there's another one at, at pin C, there's another force. That would make it two force member, but we have an external force being applied at the middle of this member, um, force P, which makes it a multi-force member. And um, so that's kind of like one difference when it comes to trusses and frames. Trusses are composed of two force members only, and frames are essentially used to support the weights and frames are used to support loads and they can include multi-force members having three or more forces within one member of that structure. So that's one example that oftentimes I used to get the trusses and frames confused, but with practice it'll be easier to identify them. Now one thing I do want to mention here, just as the previous videos when it came to truss analysis, we have what's called the internal forces. In this case, for this example, we have pin B. Um, now we could analyze the entire structure kind of like we did with trusses, right? We do the sum of moments and sum of forces of the entire structure itself to find the support reactions. Um, but you could also, just like the method of, method of joints as well as the method of sections, you could find a specific force of one member in the entire structure. The same applies to frames in this case. So we could go ahead, we could analyze the structure entirely to find the support reactions, but we could also split up into its appropriate members and analyze each one. And keep in mind, remember, when a structure is in static equilibrium, that essentially means that each member is, is, is in static equilibrium and we could use that to solve any unknown reactions. Like, for instance, looking at member AB, we have the reactionary force, right? Since it's um, a hinge, we have a force component the X in the Y direction. In this case, we have the external moment being applied and we have pin B. Now, since it's a pin, we're going to also have... Um, a force component in the X direction and in the Y. And when we're looking at a member, it's also in static equilibrium, right? If the structure is in static equilibrium, that means that the each member is in static equilibrium. That means at the pin B, we have an equal and opposite reaction B, Y, equal and opposite to A, Y here because the forces must cancel out for static equilibrium as well as an equal and opposite force, Bx, which is equal and opposite to Ax. And this is static equilibrium. Now, looking at member Bc here, here we have the reactionary force Cy and Cx. And at pin B here, um, remember, one thing to keep in mind is the perspective. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Since we're talking about the same pin, pin B here, we already have BY and BX. And in this case, since we're talking about the same pin, only it's acting upon the other member, BC, we have an equal and opposite force. So we basically represent the BX and BY on this other member equal and opposite of member AB. So we have BX is going towards the right instead of the left as we previously drew it. And BY 
here for member AB is going downward, but for member BC, we will have it going upward, B, Y. So this has to do with the perspective. You're looking at it from the perspective of the pin in this case. For static equilibrium of that pin, let me go ahead and draw it. So looking at it from the perspective of pin B, let's look at member AB first. So we have member AB at pin B. We have the member having a force BX towards um, the left direction. So that means the pin will react equal and opposite to that. So let me go ahead and draw the X component here, BX. Have it three-dimensional here. And we see this member is being pushed down at this section. So the pin will react equal and opposite. So going upwards. B, Y. So let's say this is the X direction. This is your Y direction here. So now for the pin to be in static equilibrium, that means member BC, um, the pin must react to member BC um, equal and opposite to this. So for member BC, the pin is going to be reacting equal and opposite to cancel out the forces as well as BX here. So remember, this is from the perspective the members have on the pin, but from the perspective of the members, it's equal and opposite. So for a member AB, we have BY from the perspective of the member getting pushed down, but the pin reacts equal and opposite to that. But the second you're looking at member BC, the member is being pushed towards the right, but the pin is reacting equal and opposite. Um, so the for, for static equilibrium. So this is some concept that perhaps may take a little bit more time, um, more thought to um, further solidify your your the concept of this. But with time, once you once you get the hang of this, it'll be a lot easier. Um, but hopefully, the logic and reasoning here makes sense to you. So let's now finally go ahead and do an example problem. So for this problem statement, we have determined the horizontal and vertical component, components of reaction at pin C. So we, we have pin C, we have pin A here, we have a member AB connecting to member BC. Over here we have an external moment being applied as well as an external force, which is 400 newtons. So in this case, find the reaction components of C. Now, one thing you could do, of course, like we've always done, is do the sum of forces and moments for the whole structure. But in this case, we see we have two hinges. So we're going to have four unknowns, and we only have three equilibrium equations to apply. So we're going to have four unknowns, and with only three equations, we won't be able to fully solve the problem. So in this specific case, it's best to split up the components and um, first... Um, Analyze one and then um, go ahead and analyze the other. So let's go ahead and do this for let's go ahead and do member a B So for member a B we have a reactionary force at a so we have a X here and So we have a reactionary force at a we have a Y as well as AX. Now, of course, this whole structure is in static equilibrium. That means this member is also in static equilibrium. So this member at, at pin B has to have equal and opposite forces of AY and AX. So we have BY equal and opposite to AY, and we have BX equal and opposite to BX. So now to make it a little bit easier easier to explain this, I'm going to go ahead and draw the magnitudes of these components. So here's going to be the magnitude A, right, and the magnitude B equal and opposite. So let's go ahead and do member BC. 
So now looking at it from the perspective of member BC here at pin B, we're not going to have this magnitude B going down. We're, we're going to have it equal and opposite, right? There you go. This is going to be the force. So now we could actually analyze only member BC just by drawing the magnitude of the force that's basically being caused by member AB. And a rule of thumb is when you have these weird G geometric uh, members, you could just um, draw a straight line of action through both of them and that will be the position of the force of that member here and luckily we have the rise and the run right um, we have that it's one meter going up and this one is actually also one meter as well so we have the rise and the run essentially we have the angle of that magnitude of the force and now we just basically we are able to do the equilibrium equations here for um, CX and CY and solve accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and call this FAB and let's go ahead and apply the static equilibrium equ equations only to member BC here. So first I'll do the sum of moments with respect to point C. Of course counterclockwise is the positive um, sign convention. So doing the sum of moments we get we have a 800 newton meter newton meters uh, moment external moment being applied to this member we have the force 400 newtons times 2 meters which plus the force a b we do the um, the x component part so it's adjacent over hypotenuse and the perpendicular length is one meter take away f a b is opposite over hypotenuse times the perpendicular distance in this case is three meters is equal to zero so we see we only have one unknown here and so we go ahead and solve for that one unknown which gives us f a b is equal to 1131 newtons now having this we're able to solve for the x and y component of the reaction c so let's go ahead and do that so some of forces along the x direction we have negative cx plus 1131 we're taking the x component of fab so it's adjacent over hypotenuse and this is equal to zero so cx gives us 800 newtons is the x component now let's go ahead and do the summation forces along the y direction and from here we solve for cy and we get negative 400 newtons which basically means it's 400 newtons in the downward direction because of that negative that we got our assumption was incorrect so now you could go ahead and double check when it comes to the slope the angle of this force you could go ahead and do the sum of moments um, with respect to point eight for this specific member and you'll see that bx is equal to by so there's a one-to-one -one ratio and basically gives you the same angle here and so this is a problem this is how you solve when it comes to problems um, dealing with frames here you could um, look solve for the reactionary forces with the entire structure sometimes it may be simpler just to split up the structure into its respective members and solve accordingly